After seeing that, I went into the Ganga. It was so nice to get out of the heat. And I was so enthusiastic. I may never come to Prayag in my life again. I want to stay in this river and get purified as long as I can. And I, I swam all the way across to the other side. There was nobody there. And when I got to the other side, I crawled out onto the bank and began to sink. I was being swallowed by Mother Earth. It was quicksand. I was sinking lower and lower, and somehow or other I grabbed a bush, and I was pulling and pulling, and then the bush got uprooted. But somehow or other I got out of the quicksand, and I came back into Mother Ganga. Her current was so strong. She was pushing me back to the quicksand. I was swimming against her current. I was swimming. I went about a foot, and then I was pushed back a foot, and I went a foot, and was pushed back a foot. I went a couple feet and pushed back a foot. It was a long distance. I was swimming and swimming and swimming until I was totally exhausted. My arms could hardly move anymore. And I was not making any progress whatsoever. And I had to decide, am I going to die being drowned by the Ganga, or am I going to die in the quicksand? And I decided Ganga's better. <laughs> Just at that moment, a distance away, there was a boatman. I remember he had a red turban on. He was just rowboat. And I was crying, he was a distance. I was calling out for his help and calling out and screaming as I was getting pushed back. And then he looked at me and went like this. And then just kept going and left me there to drown. At that point, I realized that I will die. And I was pulled under the water. And under the water, one of the greatest blessings of my life the same mantra that I heard from Mother Ganga months and months before in Rishikesh came into my mind. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. As I chanted, just in my mind, I felt peace. I felt that there is no death. And then my mind was clear. I thought, why did that fisherman go like that? Now I know. I was so frantic to save my life. I was in such a passionate condition. I couldn't understand him. He was telling me, Mother Yamuna is flowing very peacefully this way. Mother Ganga is flowing forcefully this way. You're going against her. He said, flow with the current of Yamuna. So I just changed my direction. And I went about a mile down. As I was going, I was thinking, I left my passport at the Sangam. <laughs> um, but I was thinking, I, I just received the visa of this mantra. <laughs> that took me beyond death. And hours and hours later, I finally came back to that place. And by that time, it was like sunset. And there were hundreds and hundreds of people taking their baths. And my little cloth bag with my passport was there. I sat in the sand. I was thinking. This same sand, at noontime, it was blazing hot, causing me so much pain. And the same type of sand across the river was sucking me down. 
stone, quicksand, to suffocate me. And now the sand is so refreshing and cool and nice. Are we not all like that sand? How we are influenced by people and environment around us? According to the circumstances that we're in, we could be angry and envious, or we could be kind and compassionate. We could feel peace, we could feel total unrest. How important our environment is. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastra Koi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. I learned later that association with holy people, and I was meditating in my own way on this principle, when we associate with holy people, it brings the good out in us. When we're in an environment, whether it's our puja room, whether it's a mandir, whether whatever, a holy place, it brings the good out in us. How important it is in our lives to learn to bring the good out, the divine out in others. <laughs>